This is an overview of the WooCommerce product grid widget for Elementor by Unlimited Elements. Without no more further ado, let's jump in and get started. To get started, drag and drop the WooCommerce product grid widget into your Elementor canvas. What this widget does, it displays all of your products from WooCommerce in a grid layout. We're going to go over all of the settings and I'm going to show you how to customize this, how to add filters, how to add pagination, and maybe even a dynamic pop-up that will open up to show a quick view of your product. So to get started, before we go into the settings, let's go to this part, which is called products query. Inside of the products query, there are four types of source types. Current query products, that's for a shop page or an archive page using Elementor Theme Builder. Custom products, that's advanced dynamic rules using the include or exclude, which I'm going to go in later. Related products, that's for a single product page to show more products from the same category. Or a manual selection, let's quickly show this option. Over here, you can search for all sorts of products and show them exactly by name. So it's going to be a list of manually selected products. The use case we're going to show today is for custom products over here. So I'm just going to select over here, custom products. And right now it's just showing the latest products, the latest ones that have been added to the WooCommerce shop. Now to show specific categories, you can go over here and instead of all categories, I'm just going to search for some specific ones. So let's show bikes, scooters, and let's say skateboards. Okay. Now you can see that it's saying no products found. And that's because the include by is set to and. We're going to need to change that to or because it's going to be bikes or scooters or skateboards. And now we can see our grid. Over here, you have a lot of advanced rules that you can add. So if we're going to open the include by, there's some specific rules just for uh, WooCommerce. So products on sale, upsell products, cross sell products, out of stock products, recently viewed products. Uh, all of these are dynamic rules that you can add to the grid to decide which products to display on the page. I'm going to leave it right now like this. Another thing that you can do is you could change the maximum number of products because right now it's showing 10 and that doesn't really fit my grid well. So in my case, let's say I want to have two rows and we have three columns in each row. So I'm going to want to show just six products, which sort of makes more sense, right? And of course, later on, we can add pagination down here. You can order by all sorts of different parameters. And again, what makes this widget special is that you can order by price, by sale price, by number of sales, or by WooCommerce rating. So all of these are really, really special just for the WooCommerce use case. Important stuff. Now, before we're going to continue, I'm just going to quickly show you how I add pagination. And you know what? Let's change our grid to just three products so we can fit everything in one screen. And let's go into post and pagination filtering. So over here we have two options. The first option is for the pagination. And the most popular use case is for using the use pagination widget. And we're going to need to add that widget. And we have an option also to connect to different types of filters. So I'm just going to turn that on. All our filters are Ajax based. That means that when you click on a filter, it will not reload the page and it will be really, really, really fast. So to search for the pagination widget, I'm just going to search for pagination and the pagination is called post pagination. I'm going to drag and drop that inside of here. And to test this, we're going to need to save the page and then preview the page inside of our live website. So you can see there are a lot of pages over here, uh, but I can paginate 
between the different products. If you don't want it to show that way, you, instead of show all, you can just turn this off and that will not show all the pages. That will show like uh, just a couple of pages. Let me show you how that looks. Refresh the page and this is how it looks, okay? So that's about pagination. Really simple, really fast, really efficient. Let's jump back into the uh, settings over here. And as you might have noticed, the bikes over here are getting cut off. So before we're going to do anything else, let's take care of that. So I'm going to go into style and image. And over here we have two types of height that you could use. And the one that I usually use is ratio. But if you want a fixed height, you can just play around with the height over here. Of course, you can change the uh, image fit to contain. Then it will act better. It will not cut off the image. And you can also change this to ratio, which is the option that I usually like. Because when I plan a website like this with products, I want the image to always be a squared ratio, which is a really important feature for me so that's how you do that and if the image takes too much space you can add a little bit of padding over here so that's adding some padding around the image awesome stuff right so next part as you can see this is separated into so many parts and you can customize each part i mean the title typography sale price and stuff like that let's jump back into content and the next part I want to talk about is the layout. So over here we can turn on or off each part. So let's say I don't want to show the ratings in my website. I'm going to just turn that off. And we can turn on or off each part over here. And as you can see, there's also a category. So this is linking to the category page. You can show a short description if you have one inside of your website and so on and so on. You can turn on or off each part over here. And about the prices, if you don't want them to be one under the other, you can also change those to be in an inline layout. You know what? Let's change that to an inline layout. Let's jump back into general. And over here we have options to change the layout. Now, right now the layout is set to under. That means that the content is under. But we have all sorts of ways to display the content. So another option could be reveal from bottom. And if I choose that option, then the text is revealing from bottom. So just wanted to show you that there's all sorts of uh, layout options over here. Not sure which one is the best for you, but the most standard one is under. And if you want the text to show only on hover, you can change that to overlay or reveal from bottom. There's also a side by side, which is a really popular layout. That means that the content will be on the side. Over here, we can change the number of items in the grid. So if I change this to two, you can see there are two items in each row. I'm not going to change that right now because we set our grid to maximum number of items three and we've added pagination. That's the most important parts over here. Inside of buttons, we have all sorts of buttons that we can turn on or off. So first of all, each button can be turned on or off, right? So if we have the product button that's going to go to the product page, I could decide just to turn that button off if I don't need. Most use cases, you're going to want only one call to action, right? So you can decide which one you want. And with the Add to Cart button, there's something really interesting. There's quantity increment buttons. So if I'm going to turn those on, it's going to add plus and minus buttons where I can add um, more or less items and then click Add to Cart. That will add it to the shopping cart inside of my WooCommerce website. So that's the part about the buttons. And we have the part about the labels. Part about the labels, as you can see, we can turn on or off the labels. That's this part over here. So I'm just going to turn that back on. And this automatically cal calculates depending about the difference between the sale, the regular price and the sale price, how many percent is off, which is really, really awesome. But you can also customize this. I mean, 
You can change it to whatever you want. You can decide not to show the percent if you don't want to and, and take off this label at the end and then just say this is on sale if you don't want to uh, say how many percent it's off sa on sale. And the out of stock label will show when the uh, item is out of stock, of course. Another cool feature that we have over here is the sequence entrance animation. That means that when the user scrolls to the widget, it's going to animate the items one by one after the other, depending on how many items you want. And the really cool part about this is then when you add filters, it's going to uh, animate again. So at this point, let's add some filters. So I'm gonna add another column and let's make it less wide and you can use in in this case you could use tabs filter drop down filter checkboxes filter they all work similarly but you know in WooCommerce um, usually you're going to want to use checkboxes so I dragged and dropped the checkbox filter inside and this is also really advanced it has a lot of styling options and a lot of options but the first thing you're going to want to do is to show the correct items over here. So in term selection, I'm going to change it to select post type products. And in the taxonomy, I'm going to use product category. Over here, I'm going to include by specific terms. And I'm going to select the same categories that I've selected earlier. So the first one is bikes. And the next one is skateboards. And the last one is scooters. Awesome. So these are showing over here. Of course, if you want, then uh, you can show a title over here that says filters. Let's, uh, let's say filters. You should can show how many posts there are inside of each one of these. And for the layout, we can change the layout um, to be one under the other and not next to each other. So I'm going to change that to column. And now this is looking pretty good. Let's click update to save. And again, we're going to test this to see how it looks. So refresh the page and you can see these are animating. I'm going to click skateboards. And now it animates them again, just by filtering those. Look how nice that looks. So a lot of awesome stuff going on here. And the last part of this tutorial, what I'm going to show is how you can connect this to a pop-up. So to use the pop-up, we're going to use the dynamic post pop-up widget. And I'm going to drag and drop that inside over here and what this widget uh, does when you click on the product link it's going to open a pop-up now to create the pop-up you're going to need elementor pro theme builder and create a single product template so over here you're going to need to choose that template and uh, in my case just going to use one of these over here so let's say this one and to see the template itself in debug mode we can click over here show pop-up now it's showing the pop-up and over here we can also select a specific post that we want to show so i'm just going to select in the name that i see over here just so it will be easier to view and it's showing us how this looks in a pop-up. Of course, there's uh, navigation arrows that you can navigate between the different um, items over here. And you're probably asking yourself, okay, how can a user open this pop-up? Because right now the only button is add to cart. So one second before I'm gonna show that, let's just customize the layout over here. Let's move it to the end over here and inside of style 
let's make it 100% height so that's going to be 100 VH and the width can be 400 so that's how I want my pop-up to open up so now after I finish designing my pop-up and selecting the test post I can close the show pop-up inside of the debug mode and I'm going to jump back into the WooCommerce product grid over here inside of buttons I'm gonna bring back the show product button and instead of going to the post link what I want it to do is go to uh, open the dynamic post pop-up so that's how you connect between this button and the pop-up now we can turn off the add to cart buttons because it looks weird when everything is together I'm gonna click update to save and we're going to jump into the live preview of the page then I'm going to click details and the pop-up is going to open in an overlay on the page and uh, the user can navigate this can close it at any time paginate filter and do whatever he wants so I hope this tutorial was helpful if you have any questions you can post them in the comments and I'm going to see you in the next video